Charles Dickens opens his novel, A Tale of Two Cities, with these words. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the season of light. It was the season of darkness. It was the spring of hope. It was the winter of despair. We had everything before us. We were all going direct to heaven. We were all going direct the other way. Reading or hearing these words for the first time causes, probably causes all of us to wonder what lies ahead in this novel. We know Dickens is purposefully using paradoxes, phrasing which appears to show the opposite of common sense, but is in reality stating a truth, even if we are unsure of what that truth might be. Every year on Good Friday, we are reminded that we are celebrating one of the greatest paradoxes of all times, the cross of Jesus Christ. While the death of Jesus on the cross is truly the most tragic event in human history, it is at the same time the most wonderful gift that humankind has ever received. And while Jesus' death was a sad spectacle, it is the most stunning defeat that Satan has ever suffered. And it is the most glorious victory that has ever been won for humankind. Christ won by losing, he conquered by surrendering. While, on the, while the cross portrays our human sinfulness, it also shows God's great holiness. And while that same cross shows our human weakness to sin, it reveals God's divine strength to forgive. At first, the disciples and the others must surely have felt that Jesus' death on the cross was a terrible waste of such a great and holy man. But quickly enough they came to know it as a revelation of God's wisdom. In our meditation today, let us recall some of those paradoxes in the life of Jesus Christ. He came to earth so that we might go to heaven. He was born in the flesh so that we might be reborn in the spirit. He allowed himself to be rejected by humans so that humans might be accepted into eternal life with God. And just as Dickens' opening statement in the tale of two cities is meant to show the horrible happenings that were going on in the century London and Paris, so too the paradoxes in the life of Jesus Christ show how light and darkness, hope and despair, smash into each other and change our human lives forever. The cross of Jesus Christ is truly the biggest paradox in the history of the human race. And it is such a challenging statement that even the Bible describes it as the greatest turning point in the history of mankind for it is the very foundation of our faith in God's love for us. We believe that God took on a human form to show us the way to save ourselves from the bondage of sin and eternal damnation. We also believe Jesus' suffering and death were the best option for God to express his deep love and desire for us to live with him for all eternity. On every Good Friday, we remember the irony that the word of God, who was with the Father from the very beginning, was willing to die for us so that we could have a life forever with our Father in heaven. Even the main accusation leveled against Jesus by his chosen people, blasphemy, claiming to be God, is a paradox. Another is our belief that Jesus' passion and death in this remote corner of the world brought salvation to people over the entire earth. The prophet Isaiah declared he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Upon him was a chastisement that made us whole and with his stripes we are healed. St. Paul says it this way. 
God proved his love for us and that while we were sinners, he died for us. We were reconciled to God through the death of his son. And according to St. Paul, these paradoxes form the core of God's foolishness. In 1 Corinthians, he states, We are fools for Christ's sake, but we are wise in Christ. To die for the sins of all mankind, knowing that we humans would never stop sinning, seems like the crazy act of a fool. Perhaps today there are still some who believe our Good Friday is a fool's day. They would be accurate, for you and I are indeed fools for Christ's sake. St. Paul's famous quote in Corinthians explains it. The cross was a stumbling block to the Jews and a folly to the Greeks. St. Paul is even clearer when he tells the Corinthians, For a divine person to leave heaven, come down to earth, and take on human nature, and then die willingly for the sins of mankind, is foolishness in the eyes of the world. Labeled equally as foolish in our world are Christian martyrs who have preferred death to denouncing a faith in God. Even today we see similar actions happening to many of those who are defenders for the right to life or the unborn. We know that they are often yelled at and spit upon and jailed for revealing what is actually happening to both the women and the unborn children entering abortion clinics. The story of Jesus' passion, read just minutes ago from the Gospel of John, must remind us that the graces we were given so freely on that first Good Friday and will continue to receive did not come cheaply. When Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? We sense something of the terror that comes with bearing the weight of the sins of all humanity. The paradox of the cross is that Jesus died for us even though our sinful human nature never deserved it. Christ's death, instead of making us enemies of God, made us God's friends forever. Jesus paid a huge price for our salvation. Now all we need to work on is letting go of our pride and the destructive parts of our own self-will that cause us to sin. If we were to believe Jesus' death was too great a price to pay for our salvation, it would only indicate how far removed we are from the truth of Christ's sacrifice. But we are not removed from it. Instead, you and I, we are filled with gratitude. A gratitude that is strong enough to make us hate sin of every kind. And along with that strong distaste for sin, we fill ourselves with the knowledge of God's deep love for us and our call to share that love with others. Let us remember on this Good Friday that the great paradox of Christ's life and death is what it really is. Jesus said it this way, It is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. Plain and simple, our salvation was made complete and whole by Jesus' death on the cross. What was finished forever was the power of sin to keep us from having a lasting and permanent relationship with our God in heaven. What was finished was the power of sin to be able to control our lives. Satan was finished. In the midst of what looked like utter defeat, Jesus accomplished such a great victory for us. And because we are baptized, that victory is our victory. Beginning with our baptism, many more graces continue to flow into our lives through the sacraments and through our works of love and mercy. The irony will always be that we are still at times sinners. But because the cross, a symbol of violence, is also a symbol of salvation, we know we will always be loved by God. A God who desires to welcome us home into his heavenly kingdom 
after our earthly life is ended. This is the kind of love that God is calling us to share with our children and our spouses and our neighbors and our co-workers. We are always to be working at being loving and forgiving just as our God is. 